Hello. Recall that in a previous video, we had shown that an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian for the particle on a ring system is equal to n times e to the i m sub l phi. In this video, we want to derive conditions on m sub l, if there are any, that will satisfy this particular problem. One thing we realize for the particle on a ring system is that each time the particle travels one full revolution, it's back to the exact same location that it was before. And each time it comes back to that same point, the wave function has to have the exact same value because the wave function has to be single value. You can only have one and only one value for the wave function at any particular point in space. Otherwise, the probability wouldn't make any sense in terms of the Born interpretation. So therefore, this tells us that we have a cyclic boundary condition. So in other words, if I look at the wave function at any particular angle phi, this has to be exactly the same as the wave function I get if I add 2 pi to the angle. So 2 pi, recall, is the distance around the circle if I go around once. So each time I go around one more time, the wave function has to have exactly the same value that it had before. So how do we write that? Well, the wave function at any particular point is going to be n times e to the i m sub l phi. So now what we do is, for this part, is simply replace phi by phi plus 2 pi. So what does that give us? It gives us n times e to the i m sub l is the same, and now we're going to replace phi by phi plus 2 pi. Next, I'm going to use the properties of exponents to rewrite the right-hand side. The left-hand side stays exactly the same, n times e i m sub l phi equal to n, so e i m sub l phi. So now I multiply, so whenever we add the exponents, so clearly I'm multiplying it by e times i m sub l times 2 pi. So put the 2 there and the pi at the end. So we simply use the properties of exponents here to simplify the right-hand side. Well, now if I continue, I notice that I have n times e to the i m sub l phi on each side. So I can divide through by that expression. If I do that, what does the left-hand side become? It becomes simply 1, and the right-hand side becomes e to the 2 pi i m sub l. But I can also sort of rearrange the factors on the right-hand side to use the following fact. I know I can write it as e to the pi i to the 2 m sub l power. So I'm simply rewriting the exponent here to put the pi i as close to e as possible. And the reason why I'm doing that is we recall from several videos back that e to the pi i is equal to minus 1. So it tells us that 1 is equal to minus 1 to the 2 m sub l power. So, making use of the fact that e to the pi i is equal to minus 1. Well, what does this tell me? Well, it tells me, I know that if I take powers of minus 1 to whole numbers, that if I have a positive, uh, um, even positive power, that's, I'm going to have a positive 1. If I raise it to an odd power, I'm going to get minus 1. So recall that if I go minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, as I go from odd to even powers. It doesn't matter whether they're positive or negative. It matters whether they're even or odd. So what does this tell me? Well, it tells me that 2 times m sub l has to be positive. It has to be a positive number. Well, now, if 2 m sub l is a positive number, 
that tells me that m sub l has to simply be a whole number. So it has to be equal to an integer. So reviewing what we've done here, by using the cyclic boundary conditions, we notice that each time we go around uh, one whole revolution, the wave function has to be exactly equal to what it was before. So that tells me that psi of phi has to be equal to psi of phi plus 2 pi. We put the explicit versions of the wave function here. We've simplified using the properties of exponents. We were able to divide through both sides by the wave function to get one on the left-hand side and a relatively complicated expression involving e on the right-hand side. We can factor out e to the pi i, and then that gets raised to the 2 m sub l power. We then make use of the fact that e to the pi i is equal to minus 1. We get that from Euler's formula. And then we use the properties of powers of minus 1, that minus 1 to a power is only equal to 1 when minus 1 is raised to an even power. So that tells us that 2 times m sub l is a positive whole number. So therefore, m sub l itself has to be an integer. So another way of writing the exact same thing is to write it this way, is that m sub l, and then we use the element sign, so it means it belongs to the set, and then we write a kind of fancy stylized z, and z is the set of integers. So that tells us that for this to be a valid wave function for the particle in the ring, not only is psi equal to n times e to the i m sub l phi, but m sub l can only have integer values. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.